in the working order of affair. That's all I've got to say. It's taken three, well, two extra years from September 12 to get to this point. And it's not, it's not the fault of most of the councillors sitting around these tables. Thank you very much.
So I would say to you, you should have confidence that at least four or five people independent of this council, independent of the officers of this council, have looked at this in detail and have found the conclusions by the English report tonight. Can I just point out the, um, also we ensured that the complainants had the opportunity to speak freely to both the internal audit, to Grant Thornton, to the police, and the DCLG. And they have spoken at length to those organisations, and they have listened to their concerns, and again, their conclusions, based on their, their investigation of the concerns by the complainants, are laid out in this document. And you'll see that they have raised no major concerns. The concerns initially were raised as a third bullet point by uh, the complainants with the Director of uh, Regeneration, Kevin Adderley. He looked at those concerns and he immediately referred them to A4E, who are the external auditors of the ISIS scheme. They conducted an, an audit and the report came back from A4E, there were no concerns or issues with the operation of ISIS. Nevertheless, Ken Madeline on the 5th of July reports his concerns to the Head of Legal and Member Services, who indeed then referred them to uh, internal audit on the 12th of August. Again, another voluntary measure this Council made to check on the accuracy of, of, of the complaints. Just to remind you, the big fund, the Capital Investment Fund, aimed at supporting companies who during the economic downturn had experienced problems securing investment. The very nature of these firms are that they would only come to the council if they were having problems securing support from the traditional finance measures of the banks and other investment funds. This scheme was a scheme that was applied across the North West, not only to work, and therefore uh, firms that are vulnerable or firms that are on the edge or firms that are starting up will be coming to support in, in this manner. The fund is available between £4,000 to £20,000 per project, and the businesses that have an application for support and size and price solutions. 49 businesses were supported through the big programme. Now, Mr. Holbrook says that we have said the majority of those companies are still trading, you need to name two or three that weren't. If you take two or three away from 49, that still leaves 46 companies that were still trading at the time. And I would say to you, given the nature of those companies, that is a very high level of success, and I think it does show benefit to the scheme. In relation to the ISIS schemes on the second page of my note, again, the Northwest Development Agency introduced a regional scheme right across the whole of the uh, Northwest. And they appointed, not the council, but A4E as an independent management organisation. Every council in the, in, the, in the northwest wanting to become part of the scheme had to accept A4E or a similar organisation. The programme here was aimed at new or recently created businesses and was complemented by business startup plans. All payments were made to Will Biz Enterprise Solutions and could only be approved once they've been approved by A4E. So under other ISIS, every payment that was made from this council was approved by an external body, A4E. Again, a check, uh, again. Before ISIS, Royal Council had already had its own business startup program. And we uh, looked at the way we would procure additional services because of the proven benefits of that program. We described how that uh, um, work was awarded to Enterprise Solutions. The scheme ran from October 2009 to December 2011. Again, written before my time, but I'm confident that the report I'm giving is accurate and actually shows the council in a good light. Just to show you that the ISA scheme had uh, 877 businesses, which is higher than the initial target, but slightly below our ambitious target of 900 business stars. There were 1,095 new jobs created, just short of the RDA target. 
But all of these outputs should be noted that the solution of the RDA meant the scheme did not run its full course. But nevertheless, at the end of 12 months of the ISIS scheme, some 94% of the businesses were still trading. I would say to you, as I said earlier, these businesses are, of course, normally at risky ventures because they come to councils because they can't get financed elsewhere. I think that of the 920 businesses held through BIG and ISIS, the success rate of 94% still trading under ISIS and 46 still trading out of 49 under BIG and the creation of 1,000 plus jobs is actually something which is worth, I think, recognition and praise for the officers of this council for supporting uh, the work of uh, uh, businesses in this area. Nevertheless, as I said earlier, when the claims raised uh, the claims with the Director of Regeneration, he referred it to the uh, RDA and A4E, and A4E, as I mentioned earlier, booked no concerns. They then referred, as I mentioned earlier, this to page three, to the head of uh, legal services, who referred them to an internal audit. And again, Mr. Holbrook, I say, why there was a delay in the production of the report by the head of internal audit. I think an explanation is, is given on the second bullet point that there's no health of the of the investigator, and had to actually she later left the organisation and to shift between herself and Dave and uh, Gary, who took over the investigations. Once again, the complainants spent some considerable time with both auditors. Again, the, the report of the Chief Internal Auditor, auditor into ISIS and Big are contained in full of the papers, so judge for yourself whether you felt the, um, the report was uh, satisfactory or not. When I came to the authority, this was about when I came to the 3rd of September, concerns were raised uh, reflecting uh, Mr. Holbrook's concerns by the leader of the council and Councillor Adrian Jones with myself. I would give praise to both the leader of the council and Councillor Jones for the active interest they wish to take in this matter and the way they urge that this matter be pursued. And they were not satisfied that the council pursued these matters robustly enough. So I then asked uh, Peter Timmons, who was a then uh, acting 151 officer, to take a look at the report. And he came back to me and he said that he agreed. He thought the report of the uh, Chief Internal Auditor didn't meet all the, all the, all the requirements. There should be a further uh, report. So I think, again, I think uh, Mr. Holborough does go on at some length about Mr. Holborough, uh, sorry, sorry, Mr. Um, Galley's report, and there's been considerable email traffic around this matter. But actually, we agree, and the council agreed, that it needed further work. So we then engaged Grant Thornton uh, to undertake investigations of both ISIS and the. The complainants were offered the opportunity to meet Grant Thornton, and indeed, Mr. Holborough has kindly confirmed tonight that there were two six hour sessions. So whilst he may feel that was constrained tonight, he had two six-hour sessions with Grant Thornton to give his, his concerns in full to that organisation. The full reports of Grant Thornton are included in the Critty papers. My summary of them is the only one, there's only one major item that was raised. And also because I picked out um, a phrase about no criticism of officers, the reason why I picked that phrase out is because, in my view, officers in professional roles have been produced in an awful way and where they can't defend themselves in social media over the last two years. So I thought, quick, I should put the record straight, but the officers have acted both professionally and properly and have actually, on every occasion, sought external advice and external challenge to their organisation. But you can judge yourselves but you think my summary of the Grant Thornton report is accurate, because again, we've got the full report. Given the nature of the allegations made, uh, the, the Grant Thornton did recommend that we referred one matter to uh, the police. I discussed this with the then leader of the council and one by one officer, and although Grant Thornton didn't recommend it, we also said, well, let's refer ISIS to the police as well. 
So without any requirement to do so, we also refer the ISIS report to the police as well. Again, the complainants had a lengthy opportunity and there were several meetings and phone calls to share all the concerns with the police. They went through this in great detail with the police and the police have conducted an investigation could not assess if uh, there's any clear evidence of criminality. And the police have concluded there's no evidence of any further action that should be taken. So again, a third or fourth check uh, on this matter, again with several hours of the police looking in detail in their allegations. Also, we have no obligation to do so, but we actually agreed on top of page four that the council should refer the matter to the business, uh, the Department for Business and Innovation and Skills, which is the successor of the RDA, because the RDA had been wound up by that time. <coughs> Again, Grant Thorne didn't ask us to do it, the police didn't ask us to do it, we did it of our own volition. Biz were, had all the evidence and information into ISIS, and therefore, again, independently can address all potential matters. Again, uh, our complainants had opportunities and worked the opportunity to speak to biz officers and the civil servants uh, concerned. We have been trying to get biz to release the report to this uh, committee for the last few months. They have not released the report at this point, not because there's any particular issue of concern about this, just because there are internal processes and organizations are holding that up. But I give you an assurance that once that report is received, and providing uh, Biz agrees, because it is their report, we will share it with this committee as well. What I try and summarize here today is, yes, we have dealt this matter for two years. There's been an internal audit report, sorry, there's been a report by A3, there's been a report by internal audit which we didn't think was met the requirements. There's a report by Grant Thornton, there's a report by the police, there's a report by DCLG. You have all the papers here tonight. I don't see how this council could be any more transparent in dealing with this matter. And I don't think in those circumstances there's the accusations that a number of officers have faced over the last two years that their professional reputation has been criticised heavily in social media. This is an opportunity, I think, for the committee to recognise the work of those officers. We've been creating over a thousand jobs, 900 businesses, which are still being sustained. And I really do think, colleagues, that when presenting this report, as somebody who was not involved in this, if I had been involved in the start of the scheme, I'd be proud to be involved in the start of the scheme. So I believe this is <coughs> not perfect. No, these people never perfect. Nevertheless, for the beneficial impact on the economy and the futures of rural residents. Thank you. Well, I would say, Chair, that um, I do have uh, Kevin Adderley and David Ball, who I'm, I'm sure would be happy if you wish them to, to very briefly describe the system of payments that are made and the checks that are put in place if you wish that, Chair. Thank you, Jeremy. I think that would be uh, helpful. It seems appropriate to actually refer Excuse me, to ISIS yeah. report, Excuse page Hobbrough. 72, Hobbrough, where, where Grant Thornton recommends that the council refer the matter to police. Thank you. That's just a direct contradiction of Greg Burgess. Thank you. Mr. Hobbrook, could you take your seat back in the public gallery, oh, please? Thank
Um, the way that that would work is that for each of the business start projects, there was a series of stages uh, where payments would actually be calculated. So Enterprise Solutions would generate that report. That would go to A for E as the managing agent for this project. They would check those reports. They would sample uh, up to 10% of the evidence and look at that and verify those. They would then send those reports to uh, my finance officer uh, in the council. And on the basis of that evidence that was provided by A for E, we would pay those invoices um, to them. From there, the council would then claim the money back in the readers from the North West Development Agency who held the funds for this project. That's just a brief run through of the payments. I'll have to answer any questions later if you want to get into the detail of the process. Thanks, David. Kevin? Yes, Chair, just very quickly the, uh, the big, uh, the big scheme. Uh, as the Chief Executive uh, said, uh, there were 49 uh, businesses that were actually supported through the, the big programme which we introduced uh, having had capital agreement to deal with the situation that many of our local businesses were facing in terms of access to finance to the recession. Uh, those 49 companies, uh, their original bids uh, were to create or safeguard 434 jobs. Um, and I'm pleased to say, Chair, that um, Actually, uh, this was the uh, figure in July when the last meeting uh, was being held. 619, 619 people are now employed uh, in those companies. Uh, there have been three that have gone insolvent. Uh, but I would ask you to remember, Chair, three going insolvent during the worst recession that the country has seen, a uh, global recession for a long time. I think it's a particular uh, success. Just to go back, Chair, how was how it organised very quickly? Uh, at, the, at the outset, my best will team worked with, with businesses who approached them in terms of needing support. Uh, and uh, because we wanted some independence, uh, we then put people in the Department of Regeneration responsible for them dealing with the application at that time, Chair, the best will department, but the same as the Department of Regeneration. Um, and uh, at, at my suggestion to Cabinet, we set up an independent panel that did include Council Officer, but also Queen Bexdale. Uh, people uh, who were involved in uh, in working with businesses only. Um, so that that panel then made a decision uh, on the grant. Uh, the grant was then uh, approved through the then chief executive uh, and also the uh, the cabinet member for regeneration. Uh, and any payments were made from the payments. So they said they were buying the machine, uh, and we were given twenty five percent of the overall cost of the machine. In the grant we gave twenty five percent of the invoice that they had. Uh, so, Chair, very quickly to go through how the programme worked. Um, as David said, with regard to ISIS, uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions, Chair. As Chief Executive says, some of this predates him. I took over the ISIS programme in, um, in December, uh, sorry, October 2010. Uh, but again, Chair, uh, given the results, again, proud to be associated with one that, that date, certainly for the Chief Executive. John. Even aside from other complaints that might be about office, it strikes me 
but the officer attended to the case of being an actual speed, he took a very good job. What I found <coughs> when we got all this information, uh, and I think uh, the uh, head of legal services will confirm that I asked for this matter to come to the conclusion, something that is clever, uh, and it's taken uh, quite a long time, and I'm not surprised when I see what the contents of this file is like. Within the file, there are 628 pages, excluding appendices. Um, if you take all the emails we've all received over the last uh, year or more, I would to say we double that number, but it's certainly had very considerably too. And I had to ask myself, when once we got all of this, what was the role of this committee in, in looking at all of this? I don't think we can be we examined, we can't uh, look at every single thing. If we tried to do that, we would be here to Christmas because we met every night. And each point was going to be contested throughout this time. And I decided that my duty as a uh, member of this committee to look at that in, in the sense of uh, where, where these allegations